Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar, Transforming the Workplace with Safety Analytics. As many of you know, uh, Marisher is one of the nation's leading providers of commercial insurance. We specialize in managing risk for businesses in construction, manufacturing, and healthcare, and we're licensed to conduct business in all 50 states and have been in business for over 100 years. There's nearly 700 Marisher employees, and our headquarters is located in Farmington Hills, Michigan. There are 12 strategically located core service centers around the country. So just a little housekeeping before we get started. If you have any questions during the presentation, type them into the Q&A box or in your Zoom chat. Uh, you do have the option to submit your questions anonymous, anonymously if you choose. Uh, I'll bring them up at the end of our presentation. So due to the number of the attendees and to avoid background interference, all attendees are muted and will remain muted during the webinar. So please note that this webinar is for general information only. It is not intended to provide specific solutions for any potentially unsafe conditions and should not be relied upon for legal advice. You're advised to consult with an attorney to address any particular circumstances. A marisher assumes no, dirt, no duty or obligation to any party in providing this information. All right, so let's meet our presenters today. So uh, first we have Tim McGuire. He's a senior risk management consultant. He's been with Amerisher since 2022. Uh, Tim graduated from Colorado University at Boulder and he has an engineering master's degree. So our second presenter is Grace Kidwell. Uh, Grace is a claims customer analytics specialist and has been part of the team since 2016. Uh, Grace graduated from the University of North Florida and she has a bachelor's degree in healthcare administration. Uh, Grace also has her associates in claims and a certified claims professional designations. I'm Tim Max. I'm your moderator. I'm a risk management specialist with Amerisher, and I've been on the team since 2008. I'm an OSHA certified trainer. So we have a wealth of knowledge that we want to share with you. So without further ado, let's learn more about safety analytics. So what are our course objectives? What are we going to learn about? today. First off, we're going to define what are safety analytics and discuss the value of them. Second, we'll determine which metrics we should track, where to find the data, and how to use it. Uh, we're going to show you some real-world examples of safety analytics. And finally, we're going to discuss how Amerisher can help you. Uh, and John Lee, I think we've got a poll question. Yes, we sure do. I'm going to go ahead and put that up here on the screen. And here we go. So how many of you are currently using analytics in your safety programs? If you could just answer that on line here, uh, we'll see kind of where we are and what you guys are currently up to. Um, it looks like we've got about 63% answered. So we're gonna give you all a few more seconds and then we're gonna let Tim talk a little bit through this. Sure. So it looks um, like a fair fair amount of us are using uh, using safety analytics already. Uh, about thirty eight percent looks like about thirty eight percent of you aren't even sure if you're using them or not. So uh, hopefully by the end of the uh, of the sem of the webinar here, we'll we'll get that number up to hundred percent. So. All right. So what are safety analytics? Uh, basically, it's the science of studying the underlying causes of workplace accidents. It helps us to provide a framework so that we can assess, measure, monitor, and then direct employee and health and safety policies. Uh, it can be done across all layers of your operations um, and basically allows us to understand how occupational safety and health have evolved over the years as well. <clears throat> so what's the value of safety analytics? Uh, it can show us how your company has performed and how you could possibly perform in the future. Uh, it will give you an idea on where to focus your safety efforts and finally can show us results of your uh, improving operations. So is there one metric to rule them all? Uh, unfortunately, it's not a one size fits all situation. Um, it's important to focus on the data that best reflects your company's operations uh, and the safety programs that you have in place. 
You should also consider the safety improvements you want to make, uh, things like better orientation, better ongoing training, uh, more management involvement, more employee engagement, things like that. Um, so without further ado, we're going to we're going to jump in here and I'm going to kick it over to Tim McGuire to help us learn all about the metrics. Thank you, Tim. Uh, today, we're going to be learning about the metrics relating to safety analytics. Uh, safety analytics and metrics should be used as a point of reference to better understand how your company's safety and risk management is performing. We will discuss leading and lagging indicators that you might reference and how they can benefit your company's efforts. We hope that this presentation will give you an idea of metrics you can utilize that provide value to your risk management efforts. Before we get too far in, let's start with getting a better understanding of what we mean when we refer to leading and lagging indicators. Lagging safety indicators are reports of incidents that have occurred in the past. They might include statistics on workplace accidents, near misses, the total time lost to workplace injuries or reportable incident rates. This data is usually what we think of when we refer to safety analytics. Leading indicators are proactive and preventative measures that can shed light about the effectiveness of the safety and health activities and reveal potential problems in safety and health programs. Using, le <clears throat> using leading indicators can be a little bit more complex to analyze, so these would be best used after you've established at least a baseline of your data. This table here shows examples of commonly used leading and lagging indicators for workplace safety. Leading indicators are things such as safety meetings, reward and recognition of employees, supervisor and employee training, risk and hazard assessments, and number of audits and surveys of the workplace. Lagging indicators would include things such as total lost work days or your DART rate, near miss accidents, number of fatalities, claims trends, and turnover rate of employees. So the question is, if we wanna get started with an analytics program, what metrics should we focus on? Tim Max mentioned earlier that developing an analytics program is not a one size fits all. But our goal here today is to give you an idea of some easily trackable metrics to get you on your way. So we're gonna take a look at how to incorporate employee tenure, your employee, or excuse me, your company's turnover rate, identifying and tracking their misses and using claims data to identify trends. Employee tenure and injury data can reveal a great deal about your current programs and work processes. Data indicates that approximately 40% of injuries that occur at the workplace are the employees that have been on the job for less than one year. According to the Bureau of Labor and Statistics, 12.5% of workplace injuries occur on an employee's first day on the job. New employee safety orientation is a critical component, component of defining your company's safety culture. When a new employee is onboarded, this is the best time to demonstrate your expectations of how that employee should perform their duties and review the critical functions of the position and hazardous conditions of their job task. If there are gaps in your onboarding process, you might expect to see this reflected in your injury trends. So tracking your employee injury rate versus employee tenure is a very critical data point to analyze. But we should also note that injury trends don't just occur with new employees. Trends have historically been associated with long tenured employees as well. Many times this is due to complacency or lack of ongoing training and even a failure to regularly assess your work area. Okay, so throughout this presentation, we're gonna be looking at data for our friends at Green Manufacturing. Now to be clear, this is data from a real company, but names have been changed to protect the innocent or not so innocent. In this graph above, we can see that employees with less than one year of tenure have the highest frequency of injuries at this company. Of equal importance, we can see that we get another slight bump in injury frequency amongst employees that have been working at Acme for 10 years or more. We have some homework for you after this presentation. Go back and take a look at your tenure versus injury frequency numbers and see what you come up with. If you're not sure where to find this information, 
reach out to your Amerisher Risk Management Consultant. So back to our graph. And looking at this data, we want to ask ourselves, how can we identify opportunities to address these trends? I want you to keep this information in mind as we move through our discussion today. Our next metric is employee turnover rate. As we discussed in the previous slide, newer employees can drive our injury frequency. This is why addressing turnover at your company is so important. When we constantly lose employees, it impacts not only our safety performance, but cost, cost and production as well. It's expensive to train new employees constantly. In addition to that, some of the common problems seen with high employee turnover include the following. One, it can make, it can make it difficult to retain top talent. Two, it's hard to maintain quality control. Three, it can damage your company's reputation. Four, it can lead to lower morale and employee burnout. Five, it can be an indication of poor safety culture. And six, it can increase your insurance cost, mainly through insurance or injury claims. Keeping a close eye and excuse me, keep, keeping a close eye on turnover and why turnover is occurring is a valuable metric to incorporate in your safety and wellness program. So let's get back to our friends over at Acme Manufacturing. When we started to look at the turnover rate for each of Acme's departments, we noticed the highest rate belongs to their machine operators, followed by maintenance employees and the warehouse personnel. And of equal concern is the huge jump in the turnover rate for supervisors. So taking a step back, let's keep in mind that Acme is suffering from a high turnover rate and their frequency, highest frequency of injuries has been occurring to employees with less than one tenure. There is a connection there that we should pay attention to, and we'll get to that a little bit later. The questions that this data should prompt for Acme are, what's driving the increase in turnover from 2020 to 2021? Did a process change? Did management change? Acme should also investigate groups with a higher jump in turnover. Why are so many supervisors leaving the company? Is this related to their safety culture? And lastly, as mentioned before, controlling turnover directly affects safety performance. Next on our list of valuable metrics are near misses. A near miss or close call is an unplanned event that has the potential to cause, but does, does not actually result in human injury, environmental or equipment damage, or an interruption to normal operation. Near misses provide the company with an opportunity to identify hazards, or weaknesses in their risk management programs and correct them to prevent future incidents. This will be considered as proactive monitoring. Near misses are symptoms of undiscovered safety concerns. Examples of near misses could include events where injury could have occurred but did not, unsafe working or job site conditions, unsafe or improper behavior, unsafe work habits, improper use of equipment, malfunctioning equipment, and minor injuries and accidents with potential to become more serious. This graphic here shows you a great example of a near miss. In the first pane on the left side, we notice that there is damage to an anchor point. That's reportable near miss number one. Near miss number two is the two employees walking underneath the raised load. Near miss three gets a little more real and the employees are barely missed by the following load. Now, if we ignore the opportunities to track and address near misses in one, two, and three, then the end result would likely be an accident as seen in pain four. So why is it important for you to track near misses? Identifying and correcting hazards from near misses does the following. It establishes safe practices in the workplace. It reduces risk. Reporting near misses can improve your safety program and reduces the overall tolerance for risk, which can help you avoid fines and higher insurance premium. It collects valuable data. Reporting of near misses provides valuable information to employees and management about how to avoid and prevent future hazards and injuries. It provides significant opportunity to identify weaknesses, to improve the safety, health, and security in the workplace or on a job site. It avoids complacency. 
With near miss reporting, employers avoid complacency by constantly evaluating processes and looking for improvements. It also involves your employees. A good near miss reporting system allows employees to be involved in the safety program and increases employee engagement. Lastly, it demonstrates management's commitment to safety. Near miss reporting demonstrates management commitment to safety, which should be promoted to workers without fear of discipline or reprimand. Near miss reporting is a valuable collection of data over time that can be used for long term tracking and continuous improvement. And we're back to our friends at ACTIV. Let's take a look at their near miss trends and see if we can identify any areas of concern. In this example, we can see there are numerous near miss activities related to equipment use personal protective equipment use, and struck by and cut and strain injuries. Again, keep this in mind as we move forward with our discussion. Our last metrics for today will come from claims data. Your company's claims data is a great resource to get a bird's eye view of your organization's overall safety performance. It allows you to identify and prioritize the issues that lead to injuries in the workplace. You'll notice that I said metrics in plural because there are lots of measurables that we can obtain from claims data. Let's take a look at some of these. Over at ACME, we're able to get a hold of additional claims information from our agency and carrier. We have already addressed employee tenure and turnover rate for ACME. Here are some additional measures that can help ACME drill down on their problem areas. These graphs show how data resulting from injury losses can be observed as trends. For example, the chart in the top right indicates that cuts and punctures are the highest frequency of injuries and the close second in strain injuries. If you remember, these two injury causes were high on it and these numerous numbers as well. The lower left graph indicates that machine operators experience more claims than other job titles. And this trend is closely followed by maintenance employees and warehouse personnel. Again, Something to connect the dots here is remembering that these are areas where ACME was experiencing the highest turnover. Do you think this is related? Our last graph is an observation of day of loss information, which can be valuable to identify what is being performed day to day. If different operations are performed on a day where injuries are higher, there may be an opportunity for additional assessment and training. Other categories that we can analyze from a com uh, company's claims data include types of injuries, injuries to a specific body part, time of day of the injury, severity of the injury, which will mean how much the claim type costs. These are all valuable metrics to analyze and are available to you through your insurance carrier and agency. We have one more method of drilling down even further using safety analytics, and I'll hand it over to Grace to talk about that. Thanks, Tim. It's easy to get a lot of information on a single location, but what do you do if you have multiple locations you need to analyze? Analytics can be a simple addition to your workplace, but can become more complex when multiple locations or operational departments are involved. Amerisher recognizes this and has developed a proactive solution to assist our policyholders to better understand their exposures across various sites and tasks. Enhanced location coding is a great way for policyholders to get to the root cause of their exposures and is a tool we recommend often. First, let's review what enhanced location coding is. It's a data field that is built into a policy or claim system that allows additional loss information to be captured. At Amerisher, we offer up to three levels of coding. The additional coding is completely customizable to the policyholder's needs. With this additional information captured, specialized data analysis can be completed and recommendations can be made to reduce claim severity and frequency. You may be wondering what types of accounts benefit from, addition, from adding enhanced location coding. Technically, any account can add enhanced location coding to their policies, but it's most beneficial to accounts with one or more of these characteristics. If they average more than 30 claims a year, if there are employees in numerous departments, if there are individual locations that are managed and operated separate from one another, or if there are internal claims analysis and reporting requirements for their C-suite and or board of directors. 
Now that we have gone over what enhanced location coding is, let's go over a couple examples. Our first example is a work comp policy for an appliance installation contractor. This policyholder takes various appliances and equipment and installs them for the homeowner. In order to reduce claims, they need to find the root cause of their losses. The enhanced location coding on this policy was created for three levels, as you can see here. The first level is the type of equipment being delivered and installed. The second level is the activity the employee was doing when the injury occurred. And the third is the location where the accident occurred. With all this information collected on every claim, we were able to confirm that 40% of the claim frequency and 50% of claim severity was coming from loading and unloading appliances and equipment from the employee's work van. Now that we know what is causing losses, we can put a plan in place to reduce them. In this case, risk management provided training to technicians on proper loading and unloading techniques, and the policyholder also invested in upgraded dollies and implemented team lifting procedures. Let's take a quick look at one more complex example. Our second account is a work comp policy for a healthcare facility. This policyholder is a large healthcare provider that has multiple types of facilities, such as assisted living and memory care. They noticed an increase in claim severity and frequency, so we decided implementing enhanced location coding would be the best way to find the root cause of the losses. The enhanced location coding was created for three levels. The first is the department where the employee worked when the accident occurred. Not all options are listed here since there were too many to fit on one page, but you get the idea. The second level is the shift they were working and the third is the detailed cause of loss. With all this information collected on every claim, we were able to confirm that 60% of claim frequency and 33% of claim severity was coming from the laundry services department. The policyholder made the decision to outsource laundry services and remove the risk going forward. By implementing enhanced location coding, the policyholder reduced their losses significantly. Now I am going to hand it back over to Tim Max to talk about tying it all together. Thanks, Grace. Well, we've covered a lot of information. So what does it all mean and how do we take advantage of it? Uh, I'm, are we telling you you've got to tear everything down and start over? No, you've got the data. So let's come up with a plan on how to use it. Um, so we know that utilizing safety analytics helps companies to identify potential hazards and take proactive measures to prevent accidents and incidents. Uh, we've discussed data acquisition and assessment. We've talked about identification of risk, expanding the view of safety and data collection. Um, so what are the benefits of implementing safety analytics strategies? Uh, first off, there's improved safety performance. Uh, hopefully you would increase efficiency and productivity. Most importantly, it can assist in reducing the human cost of safety by lowering the number and severity of workplace incidents. So let's get back to ACME and let's see how they could benefit from safety analytics. So let's quickly review ACME's numbers so far. 53% of the employees who had accidents had been with ACME for less than one year. ACME's turnover rate increased from the previous year in all departments, with the highest rate being among machine operators and maintenance department. However, the biggest jump in turnover was for ACME supervisors. Uh, the near misses for ACME were highest when it came to equipment operation, PPE, struck buys, cuts, and sprains. And last but not least, our claims analysis data showed the highest number of injuries was for ACME's machine operators, maintenance employees, and warehouse personnel. So we also saw that the leading cause of injuries were related to cuts, punctures, and strain injuries. And Tuesdays and Fridays seem to be an issue for ACME because those are the days they are having the most accidents. So maybe we need to take Tuesday and Friday off at ACME. So. <clears throat> So ACME has all their analytics data now and they need to see what resources are available. My first suggestion, if I were their 
consultant would be to reach out to the agency and to the risk management consultant to see how we can help you. Uh, second, if they don't have a safety committee in place, this would be a great time to start one. Uh, if they do, they should prov provide all this data to the committee so that they can brainstorm on ideas on how to improve conditions at ACME. Um, I know they have a high turnover rate and over half of their accidents happen to employees who have been with the company for less than a year. So as their consultant, the first thing I might do is review their onboarding as well as their ongoing training programs to see if there are any opportunities to improve those. It could include integration of safety videos, mandatory OSHA 10 trainings, or maybe shadowing more experienced employees for a longer time. So knowing that their near, near misses are related to equipment, PPE, struck by injuries, cuts, and sprains, uh, the next thing I would want to see is our employers receiving proper training and retraining on the equipment. Uh, hopefully ACME has some sort of equipment inspection program in place, but if not, that would be a great first step. Uh, this program could be reviewed if they have one in place to see if there are any gaps. Uh, are they issuing the proper PPE for each job task? Are they offering gloves to prevent cuts, high-vis vests to prevent struck by injuries? Uh, do they have a stretch and flex program in place? Um, so those would be the kind of the first steps that we would look at to uh, as the consultant to move forward. So what else should we do once we analyze the data? So communication is key. First off, leadership has to know what's going on. I've worked with several policyholders and the executive leadership is not unaware, but maybe not necessarily informed of what's happening from on the safety side. Uh, the next step, again, would be if there's a safety committee, getting all the data to them so that they can start to brainstorm on ideas on how to make changes. Um, perhaps holding monthly or quarterly company safety events, uh, more safety trainings. And one of the, the most key points here is employee involvement. The more the employees are involved, the more they'll feel like they have a stake in it and the more committed they'll be to the programs. So the important thing is we, we want to make changes based on the findings, but they need to be meaningful changes. Uh, for example, it could include implementing or reviewing a job hazard analysis program, uh, reviewing and revising all of your policies in place around safety, uh, looking at your processes to see if there are areas that could be improved, uh, management commitment is really the key. Uh, if, the lead, if, if the leadership of your company isn't committed to improving your safety culture, you can't expect the employees to buy in. So you need to continue to track your process, your progress. Uh, once you've established a baseline, you should continue to track analytics on a regular basis. Uh, this will help you to see how you're progressing and if you need to change your approach to what you're doing. So how can AmeriShare help you? So AmeriShare offers our policyholders various analytical tools to provide meaningful data that will help you to effectively analyze your programs and processes and get you started on your safety analytics journey. As Grace mentioned earlier, enhanced location coding could be set up through our claims analytics department. If your company fits the criteria that Grace mentioned, uh, you could reach out to your consultant for a consultation on getting enhanced location coding in place. Um, our risk management and claims experience specialists can assist you by providing many of the graphs that were shown under the claims analysis section. Uh, based on your real-time real -time claims data with AmeriShare, we can generate these graphs and present them to you. Additionally, your risk management consultant can help you get a workplace safety survey completed at your business. So workplace safety surveys are excellent way to gather information directly from your workforce. It gives you their perception of your company's safety programs, training, management commitment, and other areas. Uh, the surveys can give you insight into gaps in your programs and employee satisfaction. It's a great starting point to begin to address safety culture and employee tenure. So, and John Lee, I think we've got another poll question. We sure do. And I'm going to go ahead and launch that for you all here. If you'll just give me one second. All right, here we go. So now that we've introduced 
again, a very basic, easy way to start to incorporate safety analytics. Do you think you'll start a program in your workplace after today? Um, and I see some answers on here. I see lots of yeses. That's fantastic. That's what we were hoping to do. And again, you know, just a reminder, this was just meant to be a how to get started. Safety analytics can be very complex as you start to move through. Um, we talked about those leading lagging indicators and, and introducing the leading indicators once we had some baselines. So definitely a, a good way. It can be a little overwhelming. Um, so for those of you who are still not sure, I think that's a great opportunity to reach out to your risk management consultants. And we're going to give you some ways to get in contact with us here shortly. So and I'm just happy nobody said no, results. right? That's what I was going to say. No one said no. And yeah. that's what we were hoping for. That's a, that's a win on our end. All right. So let's let's move on to our next slide here. All right. So you've got all this data. Uh, we don't want to get lost in the minutia of analyzing every single metric here. Um, for those of you that are getting started with using analytics, lagging indicators might be the best place to start. You already have this information or your consultant can provide you with a lot of the information or our claims department. Once you understand where your safety efforts are performing or underperforming, you'll have a better idea as to where to move forward. Um, once this is established, you can start to include leading indicators to understand where your company can be better. So, all right. Enjoy. That's good. Yes. Thank you all so much. Thanks to our presenters uh, for all the valuable information you shared. I hope everybody who participated today in this webinar um, got something out of it. You know, I, I think I, what I heard here is it's, it's really important to analyze the data, right? That's going to give you a really good idea of where your safety programs currently stand. And it's going to help with a lot of the, the problems that we identified as we were going through ACME manufacturing's um, data. We're going to go ahead and take some time for some questions now. Just a reminder, if you have any questions, you can use that Q&A box in your control panel to type it in. You can do it anonymously if you're shy. We're still going to read them out, so happy to do that. And I'm going to start going uh, through that right now. We have a couple in here. So our first question, um, where can I find more information about employee tenure statistics? I'm going to throw that over to you, Tim Max. So the labor board would be a great place to look for that. They have all that data and they can provide that to you. All right. And Tim McGuire, is there anywhere else we can find that data? I think it would be a, a good place to start with HR just to see, you know, how long your employees have been there um, and, and just to kind of see how they're progressing through the company. Perfect. Thank you so much. Um, our next question, and I'm going to throw this to you, Grace. Who can I contact about location coding? Yeah, the best person to contact in regards to location coding would be your claims experience specialist. And if you're not sure who that is, um, you can email the general mailbox for that team, and it's cxo at amerisher.com. And then they'll go ahead and loop in my team and whoever else needs to be involved so we can get that set up for you. Great. And again, for anybody who missed that, it's cxo at amerisher.com. And our last question here is, can we get a copy of the PowerPoint? Yes, absolutely. So um, after the webinar is over, I'm going to talk about that a little bit um, too, but we do send these out to everybody. And I think that is all of the questions that we have. So it looks like we covered any, everything. I'm so appreciative that everybody's here today. Um, and again, we are going to send out the webinar to all the attendees on this presentation and to anybody who registered who wasn't able to attend today. Um, we do that via email. It takes us a couple of days, so you'll probably, I would look for it early next week. Um, webinar recording. So the recording of this webinar is also going to be available in the SureConnect portal under risk management resources. So if you have access to the SureConnect portal, you'll be able to see it there early next week, um, along with our other recorded webinars from the past few quarters. Thanks again for joining. We hope that we see you at the next upcoming webinar. Um, for any additional questions that you still might have, maybe you're a little too shy to, to put them in today, that's okay. You can get a hold of the AmeriShare Risk Management Department on WebRM by scanning the QR code that's on this screen, or you can contact us through WebRM on SureConnect also. And I just want to throw out another little good piece of um, wisdom for you all. 
Grace spent a good amount of time talking about all of the benefits of that enhanced location coding. So if you are a recipient of our Amerisher Safety Connect publication, we have a great article in there about in all about enhanced location coding and what it can do for you. So thanks again. We hope to see you next time. Thanks to all of our presenters, Tim, Tim, and Grace. A wonderful job and look forward to hearing from everybody about their safety analytics programs.